hey there it's hardcore sustainable and the sun is high and it's hot out it's the middle of the day I'm getting started on a new project here today and this is my old cold frame and it's started as you can see rotting away right here and this is something that I use in the spring to get my seedlings started um, as like a little greenhouse or a microclimate in here to keep them from the frost and also to give them a little bit of a boost on the season because they get that nice greenhouse effect in here. But I need to rebuild the basic frame of this and I'm just gonna reuse this old storm door. At this time of year, I'm not really using this thing and I was thinking maybe there's a way that I can have this be a dual purpose uh, piece of technology and not only will it be useful early in the season as a cold frame, but also in the middle of the season right now, I can use it as a dehydrator. And so I'm gonna set it up to be a, a double function dehydrator and cold frame. All right, well, I got the whole frame rebuilt, uh, kind of reused most of the wood, but just put this new front piece on here. And then I've started drilling these holes at the back here for airflow, but I also want to put a DC fan right at the back there. And I'm hoping that that will sort of help to exhaust all the heat out one side and it'll be drawn through holes that I have at the front and over there and there's gonna be trays of drying stuff in here, um, sort of suspended up near the top. So that is the plan, and I'll ha I have like a couple extra solar panels, and so I'll just hook one of those up to the, uh, to the fan, and then whenever it's sunny out, the fan will be going, and it'll be drawing air through here and getting some air flowing. I think it'll get pretty hot in there, and what I'm concerned most about is it getting too hot in there because um, like that solar oven, although it has reflectors, it can get up to like 350 degrees. So all I need here for like drying fruit is about 135, 145. And then I definitely want to have the air flowing through, so that's why I think it's going to be good to have the fan. Most dehydrators have a fan in them, and I think they just work much better. And it's super easy to hook up like a little computer fan and get it going with a DC, uh, with a solar panel on DC. So I got my holes drilled all around in the front and the back and then I put this little rim here all around and what I need to do now is make some trays with screens on them and then I can just lay them in here. For the screens for this dehydrator, I'm going to reuse this old hardware cloth that was on a chicken tractor that I disassembled. It's not the straightest, flattest stuff, but <clears throat> I think I can get some good pieces off of it and I think it'll work fine for what I'm doing with it.
it's definitely an improvement on the first one. And what I want to do is have this hole uh, be in between the trays and then the screen or whatever kind of cover I put on top that um, protects the drying uh, vegetables from direct sunlight. So I'm going to move this down a little bit. Then I'm going to also put a lip around here and that will, uh, the air will flow through the trays that way and out these holes. I'm also going to put a screen covering these holes so that uh, bugs and mice and things like that can't get in here and get to the drying vegetables. Because if I put like, you know, pears in here, flies are going to come flying in and just land all over them and lay eggs. It gets pretty hot here in the daytime. It's going to be too hot for flies to even survive in here. But at nighttime, when the vegetables are still sitting here overnight, then uh, animals and bugs can come in and get them. So you can see here also that I've started drying some pears. I got these going a couple days ago and they're looking pretty good. They're not going as fast as the electric dehydrator, but it's also been cooler and cloudier than it's been in recent days. And for a day like today, they're going to do a lot of drying. I also haven't installed the solar fan. I'm waiting on that. It's in the mail and I'm going to hook that up to just a solar panel. So whenever it's sunny, that fan will be going to circulate the air through here. And I think that'll help the drying process go a lot faster. I just thought I'd do this little experiment to see how it worked without the fan in it. And just with the circulation of air going through these holes, um, I also don't have the screens in yet, but it seems to be working pretty well. This is a couple days worth and they're dried down fairly far. <laughs> So this is the best way to preserve your dried fruit, which is to put it in this uh, <clears throat> in this vacuum sealer. And at first I was a little bit hesitant about using one of these because there's a lot of plastic, but when you think about how much food they save, I used to put my frozen foods in plastic bags and then they just get freezer burn really easily in the freezer and uh, when I use this they don't get freezer burned at all and so they can last a lot longer in the freezer I don't waste food and I can preserve that freshness so though it's a, an appliance it's one that I use all the time And it does a great job of preserving these dried pears too. These did not turn out any differently drying them in that solar cold frame dehydrator than they do in the electric dehydrator. They're just as dry, exactly the same product. So you just put it in there, hit vacuum and seal on dry, and then You got to be careful a little bit because if you just break one little hole in this, it lets all the vacuum, lets all the air in, I guess, not the vacuum out. <laughs> so there we go. It's a firm packet. So I was able to find some of these uh, dehydrator sheets. These are no stick and so things like pears won't stick to them when I put them on here and then it'll also protect whatever I'm drying from the hardware cloth and galvanized uh, steel that you know, it corrodes somewhat, and so I just don't want any of that stuff to get on when I'm drying. So I'm going to put them on these sheets, and hopefully it won't block some of the airflow since it's a much finer mesh than the hardware cloth is. And I've got so much more capacity in here than I do in the, the little electric dehydrator that it's got to be better in every way. All right, so I found this old solar panel. It's a 105 watt solar panel 
And then I ordered this fan. It's a radiator fan on eBay. It's a 12 volt, uh, 12 volt panel, 12 volt fan. And this is an 80 watt um, fan. So it's a little bit oversized solar panel for this, but we can see I've wired it up and solar panels are so simple, just DC power coming in. And then when we push this in here, fan starts going. So that's what we're going for, but it's probably going to go really fast. And so if I put my hand in front of this panel, I can slow it down somewhat, reduce the amount of power that's going to the fan. So I figure if I just cover some of these uh, cells, I should be able to lower that power output of the panel and uh, and have it be a little bit less stressful for this fan. Seems to work fine, I just have to install it on the cold frame dehydrator. And then we'll get some air moving in there. we have to cover. That's amazing though that we can cover up so much of the panel. And it's still, oh that's pretty good. I think that's a good amount maybe like right there. The only thing that I need to deal with now is this problem. Uh, oops. So I need to adjust one of these trays to be able to fit in here with the fan right there. I don't think the air that's coming out is too hot. It's definitely warm, warmer than the ambient air temperature out here, but it's not too bad. This is the first real sunny day we've had in probably six days. So that's something that you really have to think about and plan around when you're using a solar dehydrator is check out the weather, decide if it's a good time to cut up those pears or you know harvest that basil. Um, these pears got most of the way dried and then we got that six days of wet weather. It was pretty much like the Pacific Northwest, like every day drizzly and, and or raining. And uh, they kind of got soft again. But today they've been drying out. This has, has worked really well. I also harvested some basil this morning here. And although it's getting di direct sunlight, which is not ideal, um, it did dry out in only a couple or a few hours in here. And I just tasted some and it tastes great. It had, doesn't, doesn't seem to have affected the flavor to be in direct sunlight. It's also a very short amount of time that it's been in here and it's dried. So. I think even though it's getting sun exposure, which is not ideal, um, it's still drying fast and it's not losing a lot of its quality. So this project is kind of an experiment and I'm taking you with me in the development of this, this product, this technology. And I'm not sure what is going to work and what isn't. I have ideas like I got these uh, sheets. These are basically reclaimed soffit that somebody was throwing away. And the reason I liked them for this application was that they're light, they're thin, but they're also sturdy and they hold their shape. And what I'm using them for is to absorb the sun's heat and block the direct sunlight from falling on whatever I'm trying to dehydrate. Uh, because the sunlight can break down uh, and destroy nutrients in food, so it's less than ideal to have sunlight falling directly on your vegetables or whatever you're drying in a dehydrator 
but um, the other problem is that these do cast shade on the screens underneath and so even though they're painted black to really absorb as much of the sun's heat as possible um, they tend to block a lot of the heat from uh, whatever's drawing underneath. But since I've already tested this and I've found that even without these and without the fan this dehydrator works, I think it's fine even in that simple state. These other additions are just potential improvements to the efficiency of this and hopefully with these I can get the time, drying time down because that's something you definitely have to think about in designing a solar dehydrator is like how much time it's going to take because the longer it takes the more likely you are to run into uh, cloudy weather and then you end up with your food just sitting there not drying for like a day and that can lead to molding. It can also, you know, just in general uh, prevent you from being able to use this as a practical technology. I did some testing yesterday with a thermometer just to see what kind of temperatures I was getting and yesterday it was, it was you know considerably cooler like 10 or 15 degrees cooler than it's been lately so the temperatures that I was getting were lower than ideal it doesn't always have to be ideal and this is something like if you have a plug-in dehydrator um, you're always going to get up to that ideal temperature so it's probably going to dry things faster but the problem with the plug-in dehydrator is that it consumes so much power and it's not an efficient use of the sun's energy like anytime you can use a source of energy directly like if you're burning wood in your wood stove to heat your house directly it's so much more efficient than burning that wood to boil water which turns a generator which then produces electricity that then goes into a space heater to heat your space like you've lost so much power every time you converted that energy from one uh, type of energy to another so in this application we're trying to use sunlight directly instead of uh, collecting it on a solar panel converting it to electricity and then powering an electric uh, dehydrator because here with our microgrid our power is actually 67 cents a kilowatt hour if i were to buy power from our local power co-op it would be nine cents a kilowatt hour so we're paying considerably more for this solar power and solar and wind i guess is what our microgrid provides we're paying considerably more for that than you would get from the coal power, mostly coal power, that we can get from our local utility. So in making the solar dehydrator, I'm avoiding using that coal power. I'm also avoiding paying 67 cents a kilowatt hour. And when I'm just drawing like pairs, it ends up adding up quite a bit. I mean, it might be that each pound of pairs that I dehydrate, I end up paying like five to ten dollars for in power so I'd much rather just dehydrate them uh, with solar direct solar power rather than converting it into solar and then using uh, electricity in a electric dehydrator last thing to mention I made covers for the holes so that during the time of year when this will be a cold frame I don't have to worry about it getting too cold in there I'll just remove the trays and covers and possibly the fan until next season when I can start using it as a dehydrator the only change I might recommend is getting a regular computer fan instead of this large radiator fan I don't think it needs to be quite this large and a tiny solar panel could easily power a computer fan so there it is, the low cost, space conserving, energy saving, cold frame slash solar dehydrator. I've been wanting to build a solar dehydrator for so long and this one ended up being so much easier than building a standalone solar dehydrator that would have just taken up more space or needed to be stored somewhere. Don't forget to subscribe to Hardcore Sustainable and check out my Instagram and Facebook pages. I make many other posts with great photos and information about what I'm up to or just useful information. And feel free to leave a respectful comment or question in the comments below. Share the video with your friends and keep living your dreams, doing your part to make a difference because every little bit changes the world.